Originally released in 1985 on an arcade cabinet, Gauntlet was possibly one of the earliest multiplayer dungeon crawlers. The player, or players, could play as one of four classes, each with their own unique pros and cons. The game was also ported over onto several consoles and became a series, the last of which was on the Nintendo DS, albeit cancelled. However, on September 23, 2014, developed by Arrowhead Studios and published by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment, we got a new Gauntlet game. Can this game invoke the fun and nostalgia I had playing Gauntlet as a kid? Find out on this Infinite Backlog review. Like the earlier Gauntlet games, players are presented with the choice of playing as one of four characters. We have Thor the Warrior, Thyra the Valkyrie, Merlin the Wizard, and Questor the Elf. In this game, our heroes are tasked with finding the three shards of the sword Terfing by a wizard named Morak, any S Gauntlet anyone? Uh, who had conjured up the Gauntlet for the heroes to fight through, with the offer of power and riches if they could collect the shards. Morak, who, by the way, totally isn't a bad guy, doesn't have any ulterior motives for getting Terfing, and isn't simply using you to achieve that goal at all, had summoned you as he believed that the gauntlet is a trial for the strong. As an interesting piece of trivia, Turfing is also the name of a magic sword in Norse mythology, which also uh, showed up in other video games, notably Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. Nonetheless, in order to collect the shards of Turfing, the heroes must travel through the gauntlet fighting numerous enemies, and that's where we move on to... The Good like all the other Gauntlet games before it, the charm of playing Gauntlet lies in playing the game with other people. For this review I was joined by my friends 16-Bit and Zeo Drago, and together as the Warrior, Valkyrie and Elf, we tackled the Gauntlet, ultimately succeeding in our journey. Throughout that journey we called each other a variety of names as we greedily grabbed whatever treasures we could see as well as the crown, which acted as a bonus for whoever holding it when the level was completed. Fuck you! <laughs> Damn it, boy! <laughs> Fuck uh, That's what we saw last night, nothing more fun than saying, Fuck you guys, I hate you, because you stole all the gold. Wow, I did a whole bunch of potions I just noticed. <laughs> God damn it, Sonic. <laughs> the multiplayer experience captured the very essence that had made Gauntlet the game I enjoyed playing as a kid, which was travelling through levels with friends, fighting off hordes of monsters, and grabbing treasure. Of course, treasure in the original games served only to increase your score, whereas in this one it's used to purchase or upgrade relics as well as buy gear. I also like the achievement system of the game. The game would reward you every time you shot the food a certain amount of times, killed a certain number of enemies, or even how many times you've died. As well as boosting your self-esteem, when a milestone is reached for an achievement, it benefits your character in the form of doing more damage, recovering more health whenever you eat food, or lose less gold whenever you die, to name a few. This encourages the rush for gold, as well as sabotaging your friend's health by destroying their food. If you aren't very good at the game, or if you're a beginner, then the achievement for dying or taking damage may benefit you in the long run. Another thing worth noting is how some of the characters play too. The wizard in particular plays pretty much as if he was pulled straight out of Magicka. The elf is quick and nimble, Valkyrie seems to be more a defensive class, and the warrior just likes to run in and hack everything to death. This reflects how these classes were portrayed in the other games, with the exception of Wizard having powerful magic whenever he used a potion. Some of the abilities, or relics as they're called, have been pretty handy while going through the game. One relic in particular allows you to become ethereal for a short period of time, enabling you to escape out of a tough situation while hurting your enemies at the same time. At a higher level you can also heal yourself whenever you use that ability to damage enemies. Another has a similar effect to temporary invisibility, where enemies ignore you for a short time frame. As I mentioned earlier, in order to use these skills initially, you need to purchase them. To get the money so you can purchase them, requires you to grab gold and treasure from the gauntlet, thus antagonising your friends, or other players as you could hog all the gold, leaving them with barely any money to buy relics with. Which could be a bad thing on more difficult levels. Speaking of which, we'll finish up on the good so we can go straight into... The bad. 
The amount of levels leaves something to be desired. It pales in comparison to the amount of levels offered by the earlier Gauntlet games, especially if the end goal was to invoke the feeling of nostalgia for people who have played Gauntlet and Gauntlet 2. If anything from my experience is playing the game, levels don't seem to be randomised either. So you don't get your levels that have invisible walls or moving exits, as well as slowly decreasing health and that removed a lot of the challenge the older games presented. Also lacking in this game were your amulets which granted you things like reflective shots, super shots or temporary invulnerability for example. However relics have addressed some of these issues, super shots have sort of been incorporated into the elf snipe ability and reflective shots can only more or less apply to the wizard and elf. In regards to the levels, the level structure always seems to be the same. The first stage is always a standard kill the monsters and reach the end scenario. The second tends to vary depending on what area you're in. The crypt has you avoiding death, the caverns have you navigating them in the dark, and the burning temple requires you to avoid fireballs. The third level is generally an arena match where monster spawners appear and your goal is to destroy them all in one big long endurance match. The final level in each area is your boss fight. Next up, equipment in this game seems to be purely cosmetic. A lot of them require you to unlock them by beating levels on certain difficulties as well as having the gold to purchase them. To me it feels somewhat pointless and only serves as a trophy of sorts to show that you've beaten the level on that difficulty as well as to make your character look unique. Although at that point when it comes to buying the equipment you would easily have the gold to afford these things because as you increase the difficulty level you get more gold as a result. And that brings us to the next part of the review. The Ugly Graphically the game isn't the prettiest thing out and to be fair Gauntlet was never a game about good graphics. Environments look good and monster designs have been pretty well done, especially on the bosses. During our playthrough we had come across an issue in which a block we were moving didn't appear at the destination that we had pushed it to. What the? Where'd it go? What? Oh god! What? <laughs> it fucking vanished! <laughs> I hope you're recording, Sarah. Whether that was a latency problem or a bug in the game, that and a missing key on the second level where we first encountered death were the only problems that we experienced throughout the whole game. Let's uh, leave the zone, then he'll, he'll probably like teleport out. Or not. God damn it. As fun as Gauntlet was to play, I personally had more fun playing the first two games. Hell, I even booted up Gauntlet 2 on my Amiga 600 shortly after beating the game. Perhaps I'm talking with nostalgia goggles on, but the randomization aspect and difficulty spike of Gauntlet and Gauntlet 2, along with having your health slowly go down over time, had made it quite the challenging game and always kept me guessing what would happen next. To be fair, Gauntlet 2014 does have a difficulty in which even the food is made of gold, thus forcing the player to rely on other methods to heal themselves or die trying. In the end, Gauntlet 2014 was designed to make me feel like I was playing an old Gauntlet game, or at least the NES version, and while it's done that for the most part, newer fans of the games who were brought up on Legends and Dark Legacy may be left disappointed. If you have friends and you want to call each other names while denying yourselves the resources that you all need for general fun, I'd say grab this game, or a 4 pack to share. It's a good way to pass an afternoon. With that, I'm going to give Gauntlet a... Let's see, I'll give it an Elf, Valkyrie and Warrior out of food. Because let's face it, we all beeline towards it whenever we're low on health or not and as soon as we see it. Thanks for watching everyone. And stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. Oh god. Oh god, fuck. I should get out. Oh. Yes! <laughs> oh, <laughs> we all died in the corner there. <laughs>